the audience quiets and Joanna Haygood comes out with a microphone. Um, I'm Joanna Haygood. I'm the artistic director here at Sacco Dance Theater. And I'm very happy to see some old friends, new friends, um, some children. <laughs> um, I don't want to keep you too long, but I just want to say that this is a very special uh, moment for me personally, coming back to this work. Um, it was first premiered in 2002. It's been a long time kind of trying to get back to some of these themes and um, just, yes, yeah, just mostly some of these themes. And it's been fantastic to do that with Jeff Braz, my, my partner and collaborator in this project. So there's, uh, for those of you who have seen the piece before, there's lots that you're going to recognize. Um, and then you're going to notice on a pair of fake glasses. Some of the bios that start on three and on six and some of them go around and around. So um, if you really want to have a, a proper reprinting for tomorrow, we'll gladly send you a, a proper one then. Um, so thank you for your patience. This is the world of theater. Everything is, you know, this is that. And um, I'm just going to tell you, after the show, you're going to want to run up and hug and kiss all of these people who you know. But just be mindful that there's some footlights here, and um, they, they would like you not to hit them. Um, I think that is it. I want you to enjoy the show. And before I um, send it over to the tech crew, I want to introduce our new executive director, Eric Walner. This is our first ever. Eric comes on stage and hugs Joanna. I'm so thrilled after 37 years to have somebody who knows what they're doing running the organization. Um, so I'm going to hand it off to him. Um, he comes with great experience and great kindness and generosity. We're so happy to have him. And here he is. Thank you. Eric takes the mic. Uh, just quickly, the standard notes, please uh, make sure you turn off your cell phones and all those good things. There's no flash photography. Uh, the exits, if you need them, are out here. There's also an emergency stairway to the right. And uh, just take a moment and take a deep breath. And relax, and you're in for a real treat. So without further ado, the view from here. Shot pans out. You see the tops of audiences' heads. The lights are low purple and they dim entirely to black. Spotlight slowly comes up on the green chair in the center. 
and then low purple light on the rest of the stage. Mark stands up from the audience and slowly begins to walk on stage, stopping takes a few more steps and comes into the stand in the light. He's wearing suit pants and a gray jacket. He looks over his shoulder and then slowly turns around to face the audience. Almost dreamlike, he closes his eyes and lets his head tilt left. He turns again, again, almost moving in slow motion. He looks at a spotlight on the bouquet of flowers. Lights come up on the roof for scaffolding. He reaches up onto the scaffolding and then leans back. Spotlight pans over him as he dances with the scaffolding and coming to standing again. A figure in a cap and long coat is perched up on the roof. Mark takes off his jacket, revealing a white shirt and black suspenders. He hangs his jacket on the scaffolding and then falls lilts gently floating arms up in a big circle he spins reaching up and then lights come up on Bella up on the the beam up above Mark sits in the chair Bella dances gracefully on the catwalk beam putting her hands on a beam above. She reaches her leg out to the side and then hangs one leg down off the beam, holding herself by her hands on the beam above. Gracefully, Mark swirls below her, looking up at her. She hangs suspended. Her arm reaches down and then he reaches his hand up and it just barely touches hers. She pulls her hand away and then lets herself fall down, putting her feet on his shoulders and both hands on his. She crawls, tenderly embracing him, sliding down his body until they both stand on the green chair. Her leg arches back she steps and twirls down off the chair and he swirls after her. They look at each other tenderly, gently. The man on the scaffolding begins to walk down. The two lovers look into each other's eyes. Bella stands up on the chair. Mark swirls below her, they hold hands, he swirls up onto the chair with her. He dips her back. They begin a beautiful, slow partnering dance. Now they counterbalance each other, both standing on the chair, legs reaching back. Begin they embrace and swirl. All their movements just very tender, gentle, can slow, a little bit dreamlike. They just seem to be swirling, swirling and swooping around each other. They spin the chair now, Mark pulls it back. Bella jumps up onto the chair, 
And as he swirls the chair, she lifts her leg high in the air and then gracefully twirls back down onto the chair. They continue to sort of swing and swirl around each other. Now Bella does a backflip over his shoulders. He flips over the chair and they look again at each other, now under the chair playfully. She cartwheels over the chair. She balances on his back as they swirl and swoop. And then she falls off the chair backwards into his arms. He catches her. They embrace and she cartwheels off his body. A little faster now they swirl. He jumps up onto the chair. She's wearing a green velvet looking pantsuit with a big lace white collar and little black shoes. Now Mark balances himself in one handed handstand on the chair, legs up in the air. He stands on the chair and reaches his leg back in a graceful arabesque. They balance each other, smiling, looking into each other's face. Now she puts one leg on the chair and Mark pulls the chair back so she does a split on the chair. He presses the chair back towards her, somersaults and then flips over the chair. She cartwheels and balances up on the chair again. Tenderly, they embrace again, and then she holds onto his elbows, jumps, and does a handstand up above him, holding onto his hands. Their heads almost touch. They pull back down and walk together and run together, hand in hand, up the scaffolding. Now they begin to dance on the wooden scaffolding and back, playfully chasing, balancing. She again cartwheels into his arms. And then jumps up, her legs wrapped around his waist. They embrace, swirl, and part again. She lays down in front of the chair, looking up at him. He lays over the chair, looking down at her. The lights turn a brilliant lilac. He rolls and lays on top of her. They roll body to body, embracing. They swirl and roll. And they swirl back up to standing. He stands behind the chair again and pulls it back into the center. She runs. They join at the chair, legs up in the air, swirling. And they come to both balancing on the chair, their lips so close to each other. Big, full embrace, he holds her in his arms. They swirl and twist, again sharing the little, ba the little seat of the chair. They both stand and twirl, legs up in the air. And she stays on the chair, he comes and looks up adoringly at her. And then she smiles and puts her hand on her stomach and then brings his hand to her stomach, having her feel her stomach, having him feel her stomach. And then she collapses a little bit and then embraces him. And they look at each other, again surprised lovingly, smiling, laughing. She looks up into the air, sitting on the chair, holding his head, and then again falls down. He supports her and helps her back up. She smiles again. They put their hands on her belly. They look out at the audience, smiling. She looks up into the sky, and she clutches her belly, and then her knees move apart and <laughs> out from under the chair, wiggles <laughs> uh, wiggles out holding a green lantern the ringmaster or Lenin character and then again another <laughs> person wiggles out from under the chair from between Bella's legs and she births another and another Mark uh, 
playfully begins to dance with the ringmaster as another and another person wiggle out from under the chair, burst <laughs> from Bella. Now comes <laughs> Clown 2. She punches her way out and fists up, goes and walks towards the audience, sort of threatening stance, punching out into the audience, looking at folks. And another, <laughs> and another acrobat and dancers push their way out from the chair, rolling one, walking on their hands with their legs in the splits, another rolling back towards the scaffolding. Some walk and then sit up on the wooden scaffolding. Now, the chicken <laughs> is birthed and sort of clucks and pecks her way out and moves over to the wheelbarrow. <laughs> Clown. <laughs> Clown 2 is pulled out from a rope that is severed as if in an umbilical cord. <laughs> again, Clown 1 is birthed again, yelling, screaming. She jumps up onto Marg, kicking her legs. She waves at the audience and stammers around. Then Clown 1 and Clown 2 hold either end of the rope look at each other and start to swing it like a jump rope between them. <laughs> Both of them jumping over the rope. <laughs> More beings continue to push their way out through the, from the chair, handing Bella different things as they come out, crawling, running, the chicken comes out towards the audience, looking at the audience, tilting her beak one way and then the other. Bella and Mark begin to dance on top of the chair again as more and more people appear from under the chair. They're all in, again, like 20s style. Uh, dress with often caps and suspenders. Clowns one and two and the ringmaster are dancing, clowning together now. They link all three link elbows and they step legs right, left, right, left. It's in the center of more and more people are being burst from the chair. This time three come out at once and they make sort of a, a, a human chain or wheel, wheelbarrow and the three start to walk together all towards the scaffolding. <laughs> the chicken gets birthed again and Mark and the chicken do an athletic uh, duet. Then uh, the trapezist is birthed. She comes out with a flourish and now the chicken escorts her around in a circle and the ringmaster and clown one somersault holding each other's hands and feet and then all the main characters gather together around the chair and make a huge uh, tableau the trapeze stands to the side and makes a presenting hand towards them They all swirl down from their positions and scatter to different sides. Clown one cartwheels over the wheelbarrow. The chicken steps into the wheelbarrow. Clown two waves as clown as the trapezist. She pulls the trapezist on the wooden platform. It's on wheels. She waves to everybody. 
the ring master does a trio with with Bella and Mark in the center on the chair. Clown one continues to push the wheelbarrow around. The ringmaster raises his arms towards the audience and then commands Clown two to bring the trapezes back to the center of the stage, which she does. The trapezes falls off the, the platform. Clown two <laughs> brings her back towards the center of the stage. The ringmaster frustratedly tries to direct them under the trapeze. Finally, she's situated the trapeze is under the trapeze and clown one and clown two push each other out of the way, vying for <laughs> the job of lifting her. The ringmaster flips off the chair. And the trapeze is grabs onto the trapeze and begins, holds herself and then pulls herself up. Her legs split in the air, her head down, she's upside down. She hooks one leg over the trapeze and hangs by one leg gracefully, swirling in circles. She twists her arms, now both legs hold her on the trapeze. She pulls herself up, so she's sitting on the trapeze. The chicken wiggles, looking at her down below. The two clowns look at her. Everyone on the wooden bleachers look at her. And she continues to dance, holding herself. Now she's holding herself by both arms and hanging suspended from the ropes that hold the trapeze upside down and now she puts one foot gently onto the bar and lifts it up and so she's upside down in the split Then she turns so she's in a plank facing down towards the floor and now she sits back standing lightly on her tiptoes on the trapeze the chicken comes under her and reaches up towards the trapeze and then the chicken pulls herself up and holds herself suspended upside down on the trapeze. Well, the trapeze stands up on tiptoe on the trapeze. The chicken climbs up onto the trapeze bar as well. They look at each other. The trapeze continues to swing in, a, in circles as they both balance and hold themselves the chicken on the trapeze bar, the trapeze is pulling herself up onto the ropes, holding the bar. The chicken looks out at the audience and around as they circle, and the trapeze lowers herself down, so she's kneeling on the chicken's shoulders, and she gently caresses the chicken's face. And then lowers herself, one leg bent, one leg straight, now they mirror each other. They look into each other's eyes, standing both on the trapeze bar now. Then the trapeze switches and sits down on the bar and the chicken pulls herself up on the ropes. The trapeze gracefully gestures to one side and then the other <laughs> as the chicken lowers herself and her tail feathers down in front of the trapeze's face <laughs> and slides her body down wiggling herself to sit backwards on the trapeze's lap and then she lets herself fall forward and flip down onto the floor off the trapezes. The trapezes continues to spin, holding herself just by her arms, leg bent and leg straight. She suspends just above the floor. Clown two helps her down and the trapezist takes a bow, so blows kisses to the audience. <laughs> Clown two jokingly blows kisses to the audience and the trapezist brushes her aside and again takes another bow. The clown upstages her, taking a bow. She again pushes the clown away gently. And again the trapezist takes a bow and again the clown mockingly bows in front of her, shaking her shoulders. And they look at each other. 
<laughs> and then clown too pulls herself away. The chicken comes back and takes the trapeze's tan, shakes her tail feathers at the clown. And the clown and the chicken begin to circle, kind of playfully chasing each other in the center. The trapezes looks on. <laughs> then clown one is beckoned over and brings the field platform and gently helps the trapezes up on and then pulls her again in a circle and she waves to the audience. Bella is dancing by the flowers, then Bella jumps and grabs the trapeze and she pulls herself up on the trapeze. Mark is below her. They begin to dance on the trapeze. Clown two is holding the bouquet of flowers and now the trapezist has been brought over to the ladder and she's standing and spinning on the red ladder on the side. Bella continues to dance on the trapeze with Mark twir uh, on the floor, She's rolling and twirling below her. The lights change and get a little bit dim. The trapezist continues in a spotlight to twirl suspended on the red ladder. In the back, uh, the ringmaster, now uh, perhaps Lennon, is on the table reading a book. And Clown One, a spotlight comes up on the red pole, and Clown One pulls himself hand over hand, swirling up to the top of the pole and then back down. He gestures towards the audience and for the trapezes, the audience claps for him and for her. Now he climbs nimbly up the pole, holding himself up at the top. He holds himself suspended upside down, reaching his arms out to the side. He slides all the way down the pole. The trapezes continues to swirl on the red ladder. The clown again, the audience claps for the clown. He flips himself over towards the ladder. Clown 2 jumps and runs up onto the scaffolding. And the crowd who's been sitting up on the scaffolding reaches towards her and she fumbles her way, crawling, falling, sitting onto the different, mem the different uh, members of the corps who are sitting on the roof on the scaffolding. The chicken jumps up onto the scaffolding. And together, the chicken and the clown make their way <laughs> down the scaffolding. The clown falls off and onto the floor. Someone helps her up. Bella and Mark sit at the front of the stage, looking at all the action. Again, clown one climbs up the red pole, runs up it, holds himself suspended, sliding, kicking his legs forward and back, and now flips himself upside down, hanging onto the pole. Everyone watches as he flips himself, now suspended. Now again, he's walking up, holding himself by both arms. He reaches his body out into the air and then up into a handstand, suspended fully, perpendicular to the floor at the top of the pole. He reaches his arms and legs out. Clown 2 calls him to come down. Lennon standing on the table at the back begins to point in one direction and then the other. Now, everyone begins to run. All the main characters begin to run around the stage in a circle. Lennon cartwheels himself onto and stands up onto the green chair. He points in one direction dramatically. The chicken, clown one and two, play around the bottom of the pole. Clown one climbs up onto the pole, and then clown two <laughs> tries to climb up just like he did. Everyone points as she gets stuck at the top, screaming, and then slides down. <laughs> clown one catches her. The aerialist is still on the ladder. The chicken is now running in a circle. 
crown one runs and somersaults through the ladder. Now, crown one takes the, uh, helps the aerialist to stand on his shoulders and starts to walk her around the stage. The chicken pokes her way into the center stage, looking at the audience in the chair. She jumps up onto the chair, shakes her tail feathers, poking her beak forward with each little step. She circles on the chair and again gives her tail feathers a shake. Looking out of the audience, she wiggles and shakes, lifting her shoulders up, puffing her, her feathers out. The trapezist now swings on the trapeze at the back of the stage. And the chicken births a giant golden egg. Then <laughs> the clowns begin sort of a mock fight in the middle. The chicken takes her golden egg off to the side and everything begins to move in slow motion in almost dreamlike. Now Mark and Bella are climbing up the red ladder and in slow motion clown two tries to grab the golden egg that the chicken is holding up but the, but the chicken pulls the egg back reaching it towards the core group that's on the this wooden scaffolding. Clown two slowly crawls through clown one's legs, again trying to reach the golden egg, yelling out, silently kicking <laughs> clown one so that she can again pursue the golden egg. And clown one is down on the floor. She punches her hands slowly into the air in a victory move. One of the girls on the scaffolding comes down and starts to walk like the chicken. And then starts to join the chicken, copying the chicken in a little dance. They dance together and the crowd on the scaffolding now has the golden egg and they're passing it back and forth between each other. Bella and Mark continue their duet on the ladder. The trapezist continues to suspend herself from the trapeze lit at the back of the stage. Clown one and clown two continue in slow motion to fight. The chicken moves quietly, pecking her beak out towards the green chair. Chicken pulls the green chair sliding it, pulling it away from the center of the stage. Now clown one reaches up towards the trapeze and then grabbing clown two. And clown one and clown two grab the little girl and see the chicken and we'll bring her back to the scaffolding. The lights begin to flash in all different bright colors and everyone begins to run in circles. Clown two sits down in the wheelbarrow. The chicken jumps and steps on top of her. Then Mark and Bella bring the table to the front of the stage, the front left of the stage, and they hop up onto it. They sit on it, embracing each other. They are in spotlight, and then Lennon jumps up onto the table and pushes them off. He paces to one side and then the other. And then he hops down off the table, and Mark hops up, pulling Bella back up onto the table with him. And 
they begin to duet, they begin to dance with each other again, sliding onto the table, and then somersaulting and cartwheeling off. Then Lennon handstands his way up onto the table, flips himself back up, then flips himself in a back flip off. They assist him off the table. He sends them off, and he somersaults his way back onto the table. He points in one direction and then sweeps and points in the other. Then he does a double turn. Then reaching again, pointing in one direction, the chicken comes running. Then clown one runs and dives through his legs and clown two dives through his legs but gets stuck and flips herself off the table. And then stands stock still pointing. Both of the clowns run but hit their heads on the table and fall back. They lay stunned on the floor, lying down in front of him. Now as ringmaster, he looks down at them and with a hand, he pulls as if his energy and pulls their arms and legs up off the floor, almost like marionettes with his hands moving them, uh, pulling them, they arms and legs pull up into the air and then roll back down. They roll on the floor and then back down. Now back up, they look at each other, look surprised, look up at him. He turns them forward and then jumps them to sit up on the table then presses them down, rocking them to the side. They fall and roll down off the table and then he falls backwards. They push him back up and then hold his feet for stability. But then they begin to bring his foot, placing it right and then left, walking him forward. And he swirls and turns and points again they hold his legs as he reaches in one direction and then the other. Now Mark and Bella again dancing on the trapeze in the front of the stage. Bella swirls as she holds onto the trapeze, Mark sitting below her, and then she swirls again into an embrace in his arms. Lennon, ringmaster, stands with the legs wide and then holds Clown one and clown two with his hands again, flipping them around, and again pulls them up to sit on the table, and again repeating, pushes them to the side. The three fall down off the table, then somersault over and in front. Now Mark brings on a megaphone on a stand and twirls it downstage. The clowns bring on another megaphone on a stand. Lenin, again on the table, with his book pointing, exclaiming up into the air, both clowns at the megaphones. Clown one speaks into the microphone, then clown two yells into the microphone. The megaphone. They move the megaphones closer to each other down closer to the front of the stage. The crowd who has disappeared from the scaffold and now appears again in the back in low red light. Sort of a writhing mass of bodies swirling, reaching up and down. Lennon stamps and points. The clowns now with their faces into the, <laughs> into the megaphones. their faces into the wrong ends of the megaphone. They punch in one direction and then the other. And then pulls his fist back and then reaches out over the audience. And then stands a leg on one leg and balances and reaches forward. And then the crowd in the back begins to run in a circle. Some have uh, pitchforks that they are pitchforks and sticks that they're 
pressing, holding up into the air. They run and jump and leap, reaching up into the air in a circle. They run, continue to run in a circle, and the circle gets smaller and tighter. The clowns continue to gesture, heads in the back ends of the microphones. The chicken up on the pole in the back is balancing. Now the whole crowd comes and gathers around Lenin as he reaches up and then points down and swirls and reaches his arms up into the air and the whole crowd reaches their arms up into the air and then he twirls and they disperse, and then he does a graceful flip down from the table. And now all the crowd, the horde, they begin to they they begin to fight with each other, using their sticks, poking towards one another. Lenin jumps up onto the table with a giant red sash of fabric. He lifts his arms up into the air. He wraps the sash around his body like a cloak and then swirls it around him like a red storm. He runs and jumps down and is in the back as the fighting continues. He swirls the red cloth around his body, swirling, swirling like a cape. He jumps up onto the table again and again, swirls it like a big red circular storm around his body. The fighting continues. Some of the couples now on the ground having defeated each other. Now, just one couple remains. They continue to fight in the center of the stage with their pitchforks and sticks. Bella and Mark at the back have jumped up onto the scaffolding and now are lying together on the scaffolding. And then comes pointing, dancing his way through the bodies that lay down on the stage. Big, huge jumps. He twirls a big, big tour in the air. Then rolls and lays himself down onto the floor, touching the body of one of the women who's fallen. The red fabric laid out in front of her body like blood. He flips himself back up and jumps gracefully up onto the table. He kneels on the table. People from the, from the core now begin to climb the ladder. One takes the vase of flowers down off its stand. And then tries to rouse the dead fallen woman in the center of the stage. The chicken and the clowns and the trapezers come on and see the destruction. They look around, they put their hands over their mouths, they can't believe their eyes. The whole group is now hanging off the ladder as it twists. Clown one brings the green chair over to the table where Lennon is in a hands down legs spread up into the air just balancing and the lights dim to a purple on that scene. Bella and Mark embracing each other looking into each other's faces up at the top of the scaffolding. Light now begins to show them, at first in silhouette, and then a little more brightly. They slowly, slowly begin to dance again, balancing, blocking themselves. On this sort of slanted roof, they roll, again embracing their bodies, falling, loosely, almost as if they were just suspended in the air. They roll over each other. Mark twists and balances himself, so he's balancing upside down, looking at Bella, who now 
part rolls himself upside down and they gently, so carefully, sort of flip their way down to the bottom of the scaffolding. He embraces her as she reaches out towards the audience and up towards the ceiling. They twist themselves into each other's arms again, forehead to forehead. Tenderly, they hold and counterbalance each other. He holds his foot as he reaches back, and then they climb back up to the top of the scaffolding and reach up again, and then again embrace and sort of step and fall and roll their way down, balancing each other. They look like they're suspended on strings in the air. So careful and gentle to each other's bodies. Now they both hang from one arm and together they reach to one side. They lift themselves, mark upside down, then Bella. They can hold themselves in handstands and scaffolding. Now they lie sideways, parallel to each other, reaching out. Bella with her belly down and legs spread walks her way down and then in a handstand twists her way over to Mark, gently putting her hand on his heart and then his chin and he flips and he continues to dance and he catches her as she reaches back towards the audience. Comes into a split on the beam and beams and then like twists and they reach towards each other and climb back up towards the top of the scaffolding. She wraps her body sideways around his waist, making a little curl around his waist. And then she hand stands up. He catches her legs. She reaches up, balancing on one hand and supporting her. And she brings her legs back down. They arabesque and reach and crawl again up to the top and Bella stands up on top of the scaffolding and reaches up to the beam above her head Mark reaches up towards her and the light fades on them now the crowd gets up and they all begin to gather around the body of the fallen girl. They pull the red fabric up, covering her. And then gently they pull the fabric, twisting it away. And a little girl holding a red heart appears, holding it above her head. She walks and they all stand in the line and they pass the heart in their line, the children passing it, one to the other, to the other, together the heart makes its way down the line, the light comes up on the table, and everyone now begins to gather around the table again, they put the bouquet of flowers on the table, hold the heart up into the air every, all of them reaching up towards it the ringmaster reaches the lantern up into the air as he stands on the green chair in the center of the stage and the lights go dark and then spots purple spots come up on Mark and Bella Mark is standing and he's looking up at Bella up on the rafter she dances looks away from him looks back towards him and the lights go black. The audience claps. The lights come up. Uh, the core stands, holding hands, and then takes a bow. Danielle, the trapezist, comes forward and she bows. 
Adonis. Uh, and then in the ringmaster comes forward and bows. Sonia the chicken <laughs> comes forward and bows. And uh, Calvin and Tristan, Crown One and Crown Two bow. And then Alex and Helen, Mark and Bella Chagall bow. And then everyone comes forward, get on one line, holds hands and bows. They gesture towards the audience and clap. And then they gesture and bring up Joanna Haygood, the forever foreign director, and present her with a bouquet of flowers. The cast claps for Joanna. And then the cast runs off stage in two lines. Now, uh, Jeff Raz, the assistant director, comes on stage. They're, they bring chairs. Joanna Haygood comes. They grab a microphone. Thank you, everyone, Jeff for talks. coming to the show. And uh, for those of you who are on your way out, thank you. Everyone wave goodbye to the folks who are leaving right here. Thank you. My name is Jeff Raz. I'm the associate director of the show. <laughs> and uh, we're going to absolutely take any questions you have. But I, I wanted to start it out by asking Joanna a question that I asked her two years ago when she first said, let's, let's do the view from here again. And I had just done a little bit in the first, coached a little bit of the clowning. And the question was, how do you take the two-dimensional world of Marc Chagall and turn it into this three-dimensional world that's got height, and we've got a deep stage, and yet we keep looking at those two-dimensional pictures. So how do you conceive of that? Well, first off, I don't really know if I've found the answer yet. It's like, mm. Well, the difference, of course, is that uh, there's time involved, and of course, making Making the pictures move over time is, is really a challenge in coordinating all of the parts. But the thing that um, is so beautiful about Chagall's paintings and why I've been so attracted to them for so long is, one, the dimensionality of them. I mean, if they could pop out into these sculptures, you could really see how that would be a possibility. Yeah. Um, but also all of the layering of the imagery um, is so, so beautiful. Of course, obviously, all the flying as well. But I think that the layering, the things that kind of unfold, even as your eye is traveling from, you know, around the paintings and around the worlds that he creates, um, is very, very magical. And that's something that I think lends itself quite beautifully to um, this, this stage. And um, when we originally did it, we had, a, we had a very, very deep stage at Theodore Arto, so there was, a, there was a wonderful sense of time um, lasting just by when we were pushing the around their background. Um, in this case, it's a little more shallow, but I think we got pretty close to, to making that, that happen. Calvin, Calvin, thank you. Calvin comes out and sits next to them. So this is Calvin Kaiku, who you've just been watching for the last uh, 45 minutes. Hi, Calvin. Hi, um, uh, what, uh, what questions might you have about there's a, I'll give you two choices here. Questions about the making of, the art of, the conception of, and then the content of it. What, what it might have meant to you, how it might have reverberated with you. You can also ask Calvin how he did that stuff on the pole as well. Um, but, and comments, yes, we would love to hear. Now, we're gonna do this a little informally because some of you are here waiting for people who are back here, and I realize that that's an interesting get you to stay for the talk back. <laughs> They'll come out as we go. First of all, I just want to know, oh, here we go. Hello, Helen. Helen and Alex come out and sit down. Oh. So, I just check on you. How many of you grew up 
while looking at Chagall's paintings, obviously Fiddler on the Roof, uh, um, the central metaphor is from Chagall. So some, how many of you have seen one or two Chagall paintings? Kind of know. How many of you are going to go search Chagall paintings on the internet? Okay, okay. now we've got that there. Um, any questions for, for any of us up here? Yes, please. Spy in our rehearsal. Uh, and those are both both true. Do you want to take that? Anyone else has a thought on that? A cowboy looks like you got a thought. Uh, I mean that that hi. Thank you for coming, by the way. Um, I think when I when I when we first started this project, I, I researched a little bit about his life. I didn't really know too much about Marshall when, when we first started, but when I when I read about and heard about the story of his birth when he was born as uh, a stillborn. And it was, it was a, there's a house fire, and he pulled him out of the house fire, pulled the, the, the mom out of the house fire, and then he was born, and he was born, still born. And in order for him to come back to life, it was, was it a, 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 it was a man, who was it who pulled, put a midwife. a midwife took the baby and dumped him in freezing cold water, and he came to life. Oh. And it was this, when I heard it, it was exactly that. It was just, <laughs> From fire to freezing cold water to life. Fire. Yeah. <laughs> and, 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 and and when I, I when I read that and we started working on the, the birthing scene, it was like where all his paintings and character the characters of the paintings came out of the chair of the of the womb. It was that feeling of this explosion of being entered into the world. And that's what I that's what I took. You don't want to, if you want to have a child who's an artist, you don't have to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Just as long as we're clear. Um, you you played Bella and yeah. Mark, so. Uh, um, I connected to Bella's life a lot at the end um, on, on the roof over there. She, uh, she got a blood disease, sepsis, and she got really sick and died within like a month or so. Very, very, very few days. Um, and so that type of uh, feeding uh, life Tristan and Danielle come out and get chairs and sit down as well. Joanna speaks. Uh, 
uh, a comment, something Any comments? that... Comments? Comments would be Yes, good. please. Yes. I'm sorry, could you say one more time? Who got to vote for Oh, who got to vote? So uh, before, before we answer that, I'm going to hand it to Tristan in a moment. Um, because it's, a, it's an interesting thing when you have a, a, a music track that goes straight through, and but there's human beings up here, and human beings can talk. What You asked that, so what surprised you, or what hit you, or what bugged you, or what elated you? Oh, I love it. I love the expression that you really hit. Do you think you can answer that question? Well, um, you're like feeling me because I was like, I'm going to get that note and I go, oh, too much. But I got excited because you guys were here and I was like, ah, oh, my God. Um, but so Joanna and Jeff both, well, Joanna first asked to be really specific. <laughs> That's so bad. Um, Joanna first asked to be really specific about the sounds and just because we're living in this world of painting and music and all of it, the juxtaposition and all of it kind of melding together, um, which for me is a challenge because I am such a vocal clown. So it's funny, I'm sitting here thinking, I'm going to get that note. So it's funny, but she's positive. She love you. Oh, no, yeah. She loves you right now, yeah, just yes. to be clear. Thank you. I didn't even pay her. Um, but uh, I, I do think the reason they wanted that is because there is because this is so musical and it flows together that you do have to be careful about sound. And one sound that Joanna was like, yes, is when I scream at the birth. So that's, at least I get, you know, I get my good screaming. Right <laughs> Thank you for that question. Any other thoughts or questions for, for any of the folks you've been watching uh, perform for a while? You have a thought, yeah? Yeah, there was this, the long scene where there was a slow-mo, like, Yes. Comedy and then the really dreamy other thing. Can you talk about that a little bit? What was that about? We'd be happy to. I just want to get what you obviously, it obviously stuck in your mind. Um, yeah. What did it do for you? Or uh, did you get bored? Did it get interested? Did you get funny? What, what did it do for you? Um, it was cool because they kind of harmonized in a way, even though they were totally different. But also, it was like kind of agonizing because they were both so. Um, engrossing, and I would get, I would be like, okay, look at the other one for a while. Okay, look at the other one. And I was like, yeah. felt torn. But I'd like to build on that. It, it, all, it was also, I agree, it was kind of agonizing, but it was also a great pleasure because so much of the time it's incredibly busy, you know, and the, you just don't want to miss a single part of anything happening, but it's impossible not to, like looking at really great painting, your eye just moves all around. So to have things slow down a little bit for quite a long, delicious amount of time was um, great. And I appreciated that part. Boy, I love all parts of that particular question. Um, I, don't, I don't hardly know what you guys are doing on the other side there, to be honest, because I'm looking at this side, and we have our, we have our sides. We work at. Um, can you describe a little of what's uh, going on? Uh, maybe Alex, describe a little of what, what's going on on your side of there, and are you coordinated with them? Because you said harmonized. I, again, I didn't even notice they were over there. <laughs> they are absolutely coordinated. Yeah. Totally coordinated with everything. <laughs> As planned. Um, not, it, it did not, when we were creating that uh, image of the composition, it did not feel like we were co coordinating as such, or maybe I wasn't aware of that, but Joanna was, which she usually is. Um, but the, the harmony between the two pieces feels um, uh, really intentional. Um, some of it is okay, for choreography. Uh, some of it is, is trying to capture certain lines that are happening between the A, B, and C. I mean, you may not see them like consciously, but they're very deliberate. But particularly like in, in, on their side, between the two parts, um, they, they're coordinated with certain lines that they're making, so they, they line up, um, they harmonize. And then their rhythms and some of their uh, gestures line up with what's happening on the other side. They, 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 they mimic um, moments. So even though they may not be uh, biting of the chicken, but they have certain shapes that um, mimic one side or the other. And when you're looking back and forth, it's, it's hard to capture that. But in order for them to make it feel like it's harmonizing, that those things actually need to be so you actually saw something. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for seeing. I'll watch.
flash tomorrow night to see if I notice that too. I'm going to take one more question. I want to then turn up. Uh, okay, I'm going to take seven more questions, apparently. Um, let's come down. Yes. Did you enjoy doing that? I did. I liked it. it was absolutely intentional. <laughs> yeah. No, but it's really interesting because you always there's always limits, right? The art wouldn't work if there wasn't limits. The edge of the canvas, the the building, the beams that if you take down, you're not going to be here, and then the shadows. And you know, at, at moments we decided that we love that shadow, and the flame is actually good because it's there or it's dark. <laughs> so uh, it's wonderful that you could make meaning of it uh, with us. We went we went with that same thought. Uh, I wanted to comment back to the other thread about the, um, I think the clown piece and then the, the yeah. classical. I just, uh, that was, I loved it. It was so amazing because he sort of introduced it with that earlier piece of music. I think with the aerialist was right here. The it was so gorgeous. Oh my gosh, it was so beautiful moving. And then you come back and you do something completely different. So beautiful, although that's a completely hysterical scene going on. I, I thought it was, I, I was really moved by how that all went together. Thank you. That's, that's lovely. Since you mentioned the first time we played that, when uh, Sonia and Sonia did the first the solo and then the duet right, right there, uh, one of the interesting things here is that we're mixing circus with dance, and you notice that they're different languages. Sometimes I don't. I never heard about A, B, and C. And, you know, things are going on that we don't know from each other. But, Sonia, you work in both worlds. I mean, you literally work here, and I know you work elsewhere. Um, when, I just want to, you, you have three acts. You have this one, then you go over here, and you do kind of duet with, with Calvin on the pole, and then you're up, up there. How are you conceiving of that as also, you, you're being an aerialist, and then you're playing an aerialist, too. How did that work for you? Yeah. Those are her real eyelashes. <laughs> I'll say it was quite fun, first of all, because um, the uh, it's perceived that an aerialist has a very fabulous life and a fabulous <laughs> life, but it's not. It's very solitary. So much solitary training. You're way up, away from everybody, hours and hours, like. And oftentimes you get a chance to kind of march in France and play this character. And in fact, in circus school, that was all I was allowed to do. Just that. And nothing else, no improvising, you know. Um, in the real world, that, I've never gotten a job where I get to prance around ever. You're backstage in kind of the dirty corner, warming up under a couch somewhere, and then you're like, go out into your act. Um, so first of all, it was really fun to actually play that character finally, because being a kid, you're like, oh, so glamorous, I want to grow up to be that. Um, and then also, uh, I had a great grandmother that was a performer in her younger days, but then just like, was that all the time? <laughs> so, And then also, there is always so many layers of chaos kind of happening in the circus world, and I feel like nothing ever, you know, really goes as planned. Like, oh, this is going to be so, oh, oh, yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> the jobs and you're here, and like, the rigor doesn't pull you up, and you're like trying to turn yourself. <laughs> and you like, walk, you know, every time you're just like, oh, maybe next time it'll be glamorous. <laughs> And this is kind of like, okay, this is pretty normal. You All of a sudden, the spotlight's on you doing the act. Everybody thinks you're so great. Um, and then it was it was really sweet to have this duet with this chicken because it was really, you know, <laughs> reminiscent of his art. This chicken character is so precious. I wish I knew exactly what it meant, but she's always riding on his back, and or her back, you know. So that was just a delightful duet. But then when we moved to another it's kind of like, here I am doing my thing, but really this is what's going on. 
you know, like, this is actually what's happening behind the scenes. There's, like, clowns trying to eat chicken, and there's, like, <laughs> dirty people, and there's, like, you know, people yelling and clinking, and, um, and you're kind of in the back corner just acting fabulous. Um, so there is that, you know what I mean? And then also there's, like, this, this tone of visual art also, and especially Chagall, where it's like there's so much serious chaos happening, and then an aerialist with like a crooked head and flexed feet, like up here naked. Yeah. Um, so there's just so much always swimming in his mind, and it was neat to kind of be a part of that world too. Uh, I think I think we're gonna we're gonna start the it's, it's not happening yet, but the aerialist comedy clubs. Yes. Yeah. 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 Jeff speaks. Um, we have one question from a member of the cast. Come up here. Come up here. Caroline, what's your name? <laughs> oh, Caroline, what was your question? Um, you never told me this, but were all of the, were most of the things we did from the pictures that he did, or was it just from his life? Well, that is a great, and we, so first of all, we should have probably said something about this. Look at this one, yeah, we should have said something. <laughs> We added the books out and we showed you these pictures. And so those were the pictures that we actually used. So Do I know Jeff yes, speak to a young girl from the cast who's walk up and standing next to them? The potential of the morals that they create. So that's that's where those parts of you are well, where was that in the picture? <laughs> and and because you're right here, there's one other thing that happened which is that you guys happened. Right, Mark Chagall didn't have you guys. We did. So when something comes up, like they created that the scene with the heart, they yeah, they, created they created that. That, that isn't from Chagall. That's from the kids. That's the and so it, it felt like Chagall would do that. He he used what was around him. He apparently used to go to the the, the artists in Paris were invited to Cirque Medrano, which was one of the two big circuses, to paint during the rehearsals. Very brilliant marketing, by the way, because then you have paintings of your circus all over the place, and then they come to opening night when you give them comps and bring the other cool people. But he had those sorts of performers, but he didn't have you guys. And so when you start to bring it in, we're making something now, not something then. And you start to, to create that. Thank you for that. Um, I, I think we're going to wrap this up. Uh, we, we'll be around for another few minutes if you want to talk. But John, I want to give you the, the last word. One last thought about why you did this again. You said a couple of words at the beginning, but you did this uh, 15 years ago, and now you said, let's come back to it. Two years ago, you talked to me about it. What What about now is important? No, what about this piece is important now? That's for that. Oh, of course, love is always important. It's always important to be reminded of it, and its potential, and its power. And um, I think just kind of spending time ruminating on Chagall's life and his ideas and his his sense of his belief in the transformation of whole powers of love, I think is really, really I just kind of needed it, especially like right now with what everything is going on everywhere. It's just nice to sit in those um, in those thoughts and those uh, those ideas. And that these people who are so much for me to come. Audience claps, the performers clap for the audience and for each other. Tristan gives little gifts to Joanna and Jeff. The performers all hug. And the video stops. Thank you so much. Uh, this has been Rachel Dichter for Gravity Access Services.